1970. What earthly science could account for the fantastic buildings, the moving mountains, that Ireland was hiding behind its Aran curtain? British intelligence wanted a young mathematician, Thomas Sherwood, to find out. For a lark, Sherwood agreed, but once inside Ireland, he found himself enmeshed in a dark web of greed and cruelty. Here are excitement, suspense, and sudden death in the tradition of John Buchan's The 39 Steps. So, I've previously described the town where I live, Stones Way. The old village sits between two hills. On Greenwood Hill is Greenwood College, where I work. On the other hill was Blackwood College, but Blackwood College closed many years ago. In the 90s, a company called the Blubware Corporation bought the old campus, but they went bankrupt after little more than a decade of research into biological artificial intelligence. There is a large dome up on Blackwood Hill dating from the 90s. It looks kind of like a cooling tower for a nuclear facility, but of course it can't be. Even if the company had special research permits and secret clearances, I'm pretty sure there are limits to what they could have built up there. The dome has been the focus of legends ever since the Blubware Corp finished building it. The dome dwarfs the nearby office building where Blubware administrative staff worked. Nobody knows what went on inside the dome, although, of course, it's presumed the dome housed the main labs. There are no external doors or windows. The entrance is presumed to be underground. Although the campus is abandoned, the dome area continues to be restricted. For many years, there was a security office worked by a couple of guys from out of town who never came into town. There's cameras up there to track movement and other things like that. But I think the funding for security ended at some point. Or anyway, there's nobody up there now, although nobody knows when they stopped patrolling the grounds. The cameras still work, or so I am told. They click on when anybody gets too close to the dome. A red light appears on the front of the camera, and the lens turns to follow movement. As far as I know, nobody has trespassed in the offices or the dome, not even local teenagers. There is a chain-link fence around these two buildings and signs with large red lettering warning that trespass is prohibited, verboten, and very much a bad idea. The rest of the old Blackwood College campus is accessible, but most people avoid any part of campus. There have been weird stories over the years of strange things seen on campus, and sometimes people who visit campus come back confused about where they have been and what they've seen. Several nights ago, we started seeing strange lights over Blackwood Hill. Not high in the sky, but from the hill itself. It was like there was lightning, but it was striking up, not down, shooting out from something on the ground and then arcing away across the sky. Crowds gathered on the streets in the old village to watch the light show. Speculation ran rampant. Of course, the dome was suspected. Rumors ran that a police car went up there, but radio contact was lost. A second and a third car followed. Nobody heard back from them. Pretty soon, I found myself in a crowd of people. There were dozens of us. We were walking to Blackwood Hill. I don't know quite what impelled me, but I had a sense, like many others, that something was really wrong. And if we didn't do something to help Officers Chan, Mankiewicz, and Cleveland, we might never see them again. During the walk across town, we were in good spirits, almost jubilant in our self-perceived heroism. But as soon as we started to trudge up Old College Road, we all fell silent. College Road is now barely used. There are no street lamps along the road, so it was very dark. There are thick woods on both sides, so as soon as we started up the hill, we lost sight of the world outside. Except for the brief flashes of light from above, which barely penetrated the woods. Many people used their phones for flashlights, but I didn't have mine with me. As we walked, it also seemed that a mist was starting to form. A few people commented, and then we all started to notice. It was slow at first to gather, but by the time we got to the top of the hill and we emerged from the woods, there was a thick fog. It seemed like an unnatural fog, although I couldn't have said why. Pretty soon, it was hard to see, and then it was impossible. I can't describe what it was like to wander in that fog. I was totally lost and absolutely alone. I had lost all contact with the people around me. I shouted, but it was like the sound died almost as soon as it left my lips. 
I put my hands out to try to avoid bumping into anything, and I kept shuffling forward, shouting. I shouted so much that night that I'm still hoarse. Or maybe that's from the cold fog. I did sometimes see light, vague flashes in various colors from above me, and sometimes lights in the fog, which I thought must be from phones, but when I yelled, nobody answered. I don't know how long I continued forward. Of course, it was stupid of me to keep moving. Most people were smart. They just stopped in place. Some people remember standing for hours until they finally sat down or curled up in a ball on the ground. But I shuffled forward until I finally came up against a chain-link fence. I stood there with my fingers laced through the links. I stood for hours, actually until dawn, when the fog finally dissipated, as if the morning light was burning it away. I was standing facing the dome. I must have been facing the dome for all of those hours I stood there. In the early morning light, I could see right away that something was wrong. There was a crack from the top of the dome all the way down to the base, like a crack in an egg. I don't know how long I stood there. Finally, Officer Chan came to collect me. She was helping to round up all of the people lost across campus. It was weird. I didn't realize she was there until she touched my shoulder. It was then I realized somebody had been speaking to me, but I couldn't understand the words. She says I spoke strangely, like I was speaking a different language. And she says I didn't blink for the first few minutes she talked to me, even when she shined a flashlight in my eyes. My eyes were wide, not blank, but not exactly seeing either. Not seeing real things, anyway. So, that was a few days ago. I've been taking a couple of days to rest, so I haven't heard much about the aftermath. I've been sleeping on and off, just getting up to eat a little bit and then going back to sleep. I keep dreaming I'm still in that fog, still lost. Or sometimes I dream I feel a tap on my shoulder and I turn to see not Officer Chan.